first of all, let's start with formalities. Why don't you introduce yourself and uh, what you compete in and the weight class and all. Okay, my name is Hannah. I compete in weightlifting and I compete in the 55 kilo weight class, under 55 kilo weight class. Awesome, right on. Um, how did you start weightlifting? Tell me a little bit about your start. I, such a weird story actually. I was living in Australia. Um, I was working at a CrossFit gym. I was actually volunteering at a CrossFit gym so that I could get a free membership there. Um, and I always like, my favorite part of CrossFit was the weightlifting aspect. Um, can we start over? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so three years ago I was living in Australia. I was volunteering at a CrossFit gym so I could get a free membership. Um, and there was a like a barbell club based out of this CrossFit gym. And uh, the coach of the barbell club was like, hey, have you ever thought of competing in weightlifting? And I was like, no. Um, I used to compete in uh, wrestling. I was a wrestler like growing up. Um, and then tore my shoulder. I couldn't compete anymore. Um, and then I just had this kind of like void in my life where I loved doing CrossFit for the fun of it, but I didn't have any like, competitive I didn't do any competitions of any kind. Um, so he's like, hey, do you want to like do a weightlifting competition? There's one coming up in four weeks. And I was just kind of like, yeah, why not? When I moved to Australia, I was like, I'm going to be a yes man. I'm just going to say yes to everything that comes my way. Um, so I competed in my first weightlifting competition. Um, mentally, it just destroyed me because it was like I do this stuff in the gym every day and then I stepped onto the platform and things like really fell apart. So it just became this like, I really need to master this. Um, so it just was this snowball effect of like, oh yeah, I'll just like do this one competition for fun. And then here we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy how like, you could just start with one competition and then it like, it gets you, you get hooked, yes. right? You're like, this is terrifying, I'm anxious, but at the same time, you feel like I want more. Yes, right? exactly how, right. How well you do and like, you just want to keep doing better. better. Yeah, yeah. Um, as my first competition, we were like, we'll just go really light. We won't go anywhere close to what, you know, we can do in training. We'll just try and have a six for six day, which I did not. And um, how'd, you, how'd you do? Uh, I think my first competition, I snatched 55 or 60, I think 55, and I clean and jerked maybe 70. I think I made one snatch and I made maybe two clean and jerks. Um, the nerves though. The nerves. The nerves. The yeah. nerves. Yeah. Was and it the first snatch that you got or the second? Or it was third? the first. The first. Okay, it was good. the first, which is funny yeah. because now yeah. my like claim to fame is I can never make my opener. No. So my I used up all my luck in my first weightlifting meet. Yeah. I made my first snatch and then dummy the next two and now I'm it's like we just need to make my first snatch. Well, yeah. Yeah, well definitely it's it's always scary like I don't know about you, but for me, every competition I go to always feels like a new competition. That yeah. very first snatch feels like attempt, feels like your first attempt you've ever done. Yes. You're like, I need to get this. I didn't get it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. And every time I'm like, you do this in training every single day. You snatch six days of the week, nothing changes, and then you step on the platform and everything changes. Yeah. That's <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's pretty crazy. But. So tell me a little bit about what you love most about weightlifting. Like what jumps out at you as the one thing that really keeps you going? Um, it's funny because with weightlifting, I think like you always have a goal of like, I'll be happy when I hit this number. Like yeah. these are my goals. And then you hit those numbers and then it's like, no, now I want, like then you want a different number. So. It's the most satisfying sport and the most frustrating sport because you're never happy. Like as soon as you attain the goals that that you want, it's like, okay, I'm happy with that, but like now it's on to the next big thing. And so I think I love it slash hate it because you're never done. Like there's never like, there's never an end. You can always like keep pushing. Um, like I remember for, I remember for, Forever, my goals were to just be able to snatch 75 and clean and jerk 90. Like I think for two years, 
Like when I first started weightlifting, those numbers seemed like I was just like, I will be a weightlifter when I hit those numbers. And uh, like the most recent competition, I think I opened at 74 and 92 or something like that. Like those are my opening numbers and I still don't feel like a weightlifter. Whereas retrospectively, if like two years ago, I had even gotten on my third attempt to those numbers, it would have felt like such an accomplishment. So I think it's such a love-hate thing, um, but there's always like, it, there's always more to push for. It's funny how part of being a weightlifter is you never feel like a weightlifter because you always feel like this next this next PR is gonna make me a weightlifter. Yes. Well, this next little bit, I need to get to this standard. But then when you do get there, you're like, I'm not there yet. It's like it's so similar to knowledge in that the more you know, the less you know. Like the the more you can lift the more driven you are to hit bigger numbers. Or the better your technique gets, the better your eye is for like little things here and there that can be fixed. Like I remember I watched recently videos of like my first training cycle and I remember in that training cycle I was like, my snatches feel so good, like I'm really improving, my snatch technique is great. <clears throat> and now watching those videos and being like, <laughs> yeah, those are so Deletes. bad. Don't want to yeah. see those again. Yeah. And now it's like, it's like the better you get, the stronger you get, the more technically efficient you get, the more sort of little fixes you can like you see in those small fixes in like technique or strength gains amount to more kilos on the bar. So it's like the the better you get, the higher up you get, it's like the less you know, if that makes any sense. Um, I know this is probably a similar question to what I asked you earlier, but when you think about inspiration, like what really inspires you about weightlifting? It could be people, it could be like the sport itself, it could be, you know, just every single movement that you do. This sounds so cliche, but weightlifting is so much like life. Um, and the thing I love about weightlifting is weight always remains the same. Whether you're having a really good day or a really shit day, 100 kilos is always 100 kilos. Like, it does not change. Um, I think with other sports, like, this is not a dig at other sports, but I always think about sports where it's like you versus somebody else, and somebody can show up on a bad day and you can beat them. Um, but like, the barbell doesn't have a, ball. <clears throat> doesn't have a bad day. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> We need to start that over. We'll cut that out. Okay. <laughs> That's what jump cuts are for. Perfect. Um, the barbell doesn't have a bad day. The weight remains the same. So you can't mentally beat the barbell in any way. You just have to mentally become better yourself. And that's... It's such like an inspiring thing to think about like... I can come in and even on a shit day, if I like mentally get myself right, like I can, I can beat the barbell. So it becomes like, it's just you versus you. It's like you versus your own head because weight doesn't change, gravity doesn't change. I'm <laughs> Some days I'm like, I wish this was, <laughs> but it doesn't. Yeah. And so it's like when you conquer a weight, it's not because the barbell had a bad day. It's not because of anything other than the fact that like you beat the weight, yeah. which is which is a really cool feeling. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely one of those sports where you can't blame anyone. You can't be like, oh, that person got a gold instead of me because whatever reason, right? Yeah. It's, it's really cool. You blame anyone except yourself. It's like, you know, I should have lifted better. I yeah. Should have, you know, I hit that number I did, or I should have done it in a better, you know, done it yeah. crisper. So maybe the judges would rob me of my attempt or something. That, yeah. That's always happened to me. <laughs> Answering all of my questions. My next Sorry. one was, how does weightlifting relate to life? And you're just oh, that's it. okay. That's all right. Uh, do you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. I feel like I kind of skipped over it. Sure. Um, how do you think it relates to your life experience and your own experience? Okay, again, super cliche, but one of my favorite, like I love Rocky, like inspirational, um, like sports movies. I just cry like a baby, but I love them. And uh, like one of the sayings from Rocky is it's not about how hard <clears throat> you get hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and just keep moving. And that to me is like life, like life does not 
care. Things happen and you can like blame people or circumstances or whatever, but at the end of the day, you're the one who has to deal with it. And that's like with weightlifting, like I come in some days and am so defeated by the barbell, like we all are. I'm a frequent flyer in the cry corner, like, but it's about like, about having those moments of like, I hate this and then coming back and like fighting back. And that's like one thing I've realized about weightlifting is the further I get in weightlifting and the further I have to push in weightlifting, the more resilient I am in my real life. Like when things happen, I'm a drama queen, but I uh, like I can deal with them way better. And it's because I'm like fighting in the gym every day. And like, I love weightlifting. It's like, I love weightlifting with my whole heart. But at the end of the day, like I'm eventually gonna have to retire from weightlifting as much as it pains me to say that like this isn't a thing that I'm gonna do for forever but if I come out of it like a better human being like that's kind of the whole point like be a more resilient person have a good yeah. like have a good fight right. with the barbell and with life like, I don't want to be somebody who gets defeated by things it's actually really interesting you mention that because I think so few weightlifters think that way. A lot of people in any sport really, they identify themselves as part of that sport. It's like, oh, I am a weightlifter. This is who I am. They become so ingrained with their identity. It's easy to become that way because for all of us, right, we train like two, three hours a day. We spend the rest of the day recovering, eating. Everything revolves around training, right? So your whole life is modeled around it. So naturally, you call yourself a weightlifter. Mm -hmm. And what happens after? Right? Because that's what happens after. You see a lot of like our elders, coaches, people who have done weightlifting in the past transition from that to a different part of their life. It's you know, so it's really it's really cool that you mentioned that, you know, how weightlifting relates to life and kind of teaches you the skills and builds you up to be a type of person to survive afterward. Well I think um, like when I was quite young I had to quit wrestling because I tore my shoulder, I had it reconstructed, I tried to go back to wrestling and it was just never it just wasn't gonna hold out to wrestle at the level I wanted to wrestle at. And at that point, like that's what I identified as was a wrestler. And that was just sort of, I always felt like it was taken away from me. And I had to like really find my identity again because I had grown up, that's what I had grown up doing. Like, so I was 18 and was like, I have no idea who I am outside of this. And so that's something that I try really hard now like I totally identify as a weightlifter and like you said, I spend most of my day, like if I'm not training, I'm recovering, I'm eating, I'm planning my next training session. It's literally just like all areas of my life really revolve around like how can I be better at this one thing. But I'm very conscious of, of trying to be more than just a weightlifter because unfortunately I'm aware of the reality of like this is not for forever so having like enjoying every shitty training session and enjoying it now um, but having the foresight of being like this will help form me mold me into like who I'm going to be later in life but I'm not always going to be a few things um, you recently came back from Paris. Congratulations. Thank Guatemala was have been amazing. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Um, where to even begin? It was a whirlwind. Um, I think if anything, it really just motivated me to see, like, to get to share a bar with people who I really look up to and um, to be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I can compete with you guys now. Like it's one thing to to watch people and be like, okay, one day, but then to actually get to share a space with them, it's incredibly humbling, but it's also incredibly motivating to be like, it sounds silly, but like you're just cute, you're just human too. Like you're not special. Like we're you're just human. So it's it's humbling to see like holy like I have so far to go but it's also really motivating to be like oh you still eat and sleep and like rationally you know all those things but just like sharing a space with them and like essentially just living in a hotel with, with those people it's like you're actually no different or special and so 
it was really it was just so cool to get to like share space with people that are like world record holders and like Olympians and and to see how yeah to just like get to share space with them was really cool and being able to step up on stage that must have been unreal I bet it was it's so funny because we do snatch and clean and jerk and training every day and we talked earlier about how like my first competition I was like that was not what I expected at all and it was the exact same experience at Pan Am's of like I snatch and clean and jerk every day I compete like pretty regularly it's no different it's a stage and a barbell and that's it but the international stage felt way different like I stepped up onto stage and like I, it felt like my first time ever competing, like all over again, which is terrifying, but also it's kind of, it's kind of like cool that you can still have that, like you're never comfortable. Like I've never like fallen into familiarity and comfort in the sport. It's always like, oh, you're comfortable here? We'll push you onto the international stage now. And um, yeah, it was like, the back room itself is so different because it it turns into like a game between coaches and numbers jump around a lot and it was just it was again completely different than than what I was expecting it to be. What was your favorite thing about Guatemala? Oh my gosh! The travel, the uh, culture, the weightlifters. I think it was the weightlifters. Yeah. Um, Oh no, actually, my favorite thing about Guatemala was the training hall. I love the training hall. My favorite part about weightlifting to begin with is the training. Like, I love training way more than I like competing. But the, <laughs> the training hall was, um, it was so much fun. Um, like, we got to, we trained with the, like, the Chileans and the Cubans, and it was so cool to watch. Um, athletes and coaches interact and they just always have Latin music blaring and it's hot like 30 degrees humid barbell sticks to your legs it's just a way different experience than training here but it was it was so much fun that was my favorite part for sure was the training yeah. well, let's change gears a bit uh, just back to the basics what is your favorite weightlifting exercise and why my favorite weightlifting exercise. I love squatting. <laughs> I love squatting. Friends, it's one of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I love squatting because there's um, like in all the technical movements, I'm not a very technical lifter, and so I feel like. You sure about that? Yes. <laughs> it's pretty technical to me. Thank you. Um, but I just can really like. I get really mentally just jammed sometimes like thinking about technical fixes and stuff whereas with squatting it's just like just go there's no like it's like just pure grit and strength and like determination and stubbornness I just love squatting it's my favorite <laughs> all right last question for you in uh, in a few words summarize in a few words what goes on in your mind whenever you pick up heavy weights <laughs> Nothing. Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I used to like run through every cue that every coach has ever given me, and um, lately I've been focusing on like literally in my head. I say just go. Um, we work at you know like mid-range percentages all the time so that when we get to heavyweights where it's like new territory you're primed and and like your body should know what to do so I have to remind myself like trust yourself you know like your body knows what to do just go just go <laughs> the most Neanderthal response <laughs> no that's very very succinct I love it awesome thanks for doing this interview. thanks for having me <laughs>